Praise God. Let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to the Word of God. You know, we, 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 this is, a, this is, a, this is a, a, a real important lesson uh, this morning. Uh, of course, every lesson that we, we are blessed to teach here, very important. And it's important because you're here, and it's, it's a warning. It's a warning uh, for you. It's a warning. Amen. And uh, a lot of us ignore warnings. You, you, may have, you may have lived your whole life ignoring warnings. Amen. There's some warnings that you got to pay attention to. Amen. And this is, this is one of those warnings because there is a falling away of believers from the faith. People are falling away from Jesus Christ and from their faith. And it's such a subtle falling away that you don't even realize it. You don't even know you're falling away. You don't even know you, you, you don't even know you're falling until you hit the ground. Amen. And, and so uh, there's, there's a study that says more than 40 million believers are, have fallen away since 2000. 40 million. And, and, it's getting, and it's getting worse. It's not getting any better. But, but the falling away, uh, and the Bible tells us that there's going to be a falling away. But that the beauty of it is, it doesn't say it's going to be permanent. <laughs> Amen. It, 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 it's good news for those of us who love the Lord and those of us who teach the gospel. It doesn't say that we can't go get them, them folk. Or we can't stop them from falling. Amen. It, it doesn't say they, they're, they're falling for good. Amen. So maybe you are in the fall. Amen. And I, I, I wasn't really sure. Um, th this morning's message, I sent Tyler uh, a, t a, a title for it, and then I had like about four other titles that I sent him. And, and so the, my, my initial title was, Are You Falling Away? And then the more I thought about it, Tyler, you got the other ones you can throw up there? The, the, the more I thought about it, I said, Are You Falling Away? Where are you in the fall? Or have you hit the ground yet? Or, or do you even know that you're falling? Do you even know that you're falling away, uh, and, and how bad off, how bad off are you really? How bad, and you, this is something you really got to ask yourself, am I, you know, are, are you, am, am I falling, and, and if I am, where am I? You know if you're falling, if you're not spending time with God. You, you know that. If, if you are not spending time in the Word of God, you're falling. If you don't spend time, uh, gr if you're not growing, you're falling. Amen. If, if you're not growing, you, if you're not growing in the word of God, you're falling. If you're not uh, spending time in prayer, you're falling. If you, if you don't spend time assembling with other people, see, see the falling away begins when people or stop coming to the assembly first. In some cases, that's where it happens. They stop, they find that they don't need to assemble with other believers. They get in their mind that um, I don't need to, you know, the church thing ain't working uh, for me. Even young believers today are even at a point where they say, well, you know, um, 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 God doesn't answer prayers anyway. And so why do I even waste time um, doing anything? My wife and I, uh, last Sunday, we, we taught a message here um, on, um, I, it, it was in reference to falling away. I can't remember the title of it, but um, no one plans to fall. That was the title of it. And so we went to dinner Sunday night with some friends and family. And there was a young couple who left here on fire for the Lord and moved to Texas a few years ago. I had no idea that they had stepped away a little bit from ministry and stepped away somewhat from the Lord. So when I saw them, my first thing is, how is it going in ministry? And they began to tell me what was going on, that they had kind of stepped away a little bit. They, they fallen. They were in the fall. And then they said to me, what did you preach on today? No one plans 
to fall. And, 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 and what, what was said to me by one of them was, you know, I just expected God to do more for us. I just thought, th I just thought life was going to be different. She was being honest. A lot of us, when we come to know Jesus Christ, we think automatically things are going to change and life is going to be, um, uh, the, the, the tangible part of life is going to be better. We think that when we come to him, it is better, but we think that there are things that are not going to happen to us that happen to other people. Amen. We think that when we pray, shazam, that God's going to answer that prayer uh, in, in record time for us because we are believers versus just us having to wait. And so she began to say everything that I had already been re received from the Spirit of God while people are moving away. I'm like, my God, people are moving away. People are, this, is a, this is living proof. That people have come to say, well, why do I really have to go if God's not doing anything? Why, why do I really have to go if there is no power in the church? If there's no um, authority in the church? Why, why do I really have to attend? Can't I just get it at home? Can, can't I just stay home and, 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 and worship God and pray if I want to pray? and do the, it's, it's, it's a part of falling away. And it's biblical, which makes it scary, which makes it concerning. Not scary, but concerning because it's biblical. I, in, I intentionally injected scary because I wanted to scare you. Um, but then I repented and pulled that back and said concerning. Okay? Because I don't want you to be scared. <laughs> Amen. You know, I don't want to get in humanity and, 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 and make you feel, feel afraid. But I want to take you over to, over to the book of Timothy. And uh, or, or the book of Acts. Let's go. To, I'm sorry. Go to the book of Acts first. And 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 while I was sitting here, this 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 verse dropped in my spirit. The book of Acts, the 16th chapter, the 17th verse. P here it is. Peter and and another disciple. They are going around and they they are teaching the word of God. They're spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this sorcerer, this little girl that's full of uh, witchcraft and demonically possessed. She's following them. This is important. And, and the girl followed Paul, I'm sorry, Paul and us, and, and cried out saying, these men, look what, the, look, look what this little possessed girl was saying. She said, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. This little girl, little demon possessed girl, look what she's saying. She's saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God. She's telling the truth. Who proclaim to us the way of salvation. She's telling the truth. She's telling the truth, Doc. She ain't, she's not following them and saying, don't believe nothing they say. They're telling a lie. Don't believe nothing they say. They're full of the devil. She's not doing that. She's, she's, she's behind these cats, Paul and them. Paul and them are spreading the gospel, and she's telling the truth. These men are servants of the Most High God who, are, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And it says, and, th and this she did for many days. She's following them many days. And Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, lowercase spirit, meaning he's talking to a demon, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he comes out. That very hour. Hold on, Paul. Sound to me like this girl is a bulletin board for what y'all doing. She's proclaiming that you are servants of the Most High God and that you're, you're teaching and bringing salvation. Why would you rebuke that? This, this shows us that you can have a devil in you and still be talking about Jesus. That's the scary part. That, 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 you, when you think about that, you, you, a person can be, can be falling and yet still talking the talk. Walking the walk. Because she's out there every day proclaiming that. But it was, it was something on the inside of her 
She was, she, she, her life wasn't right. She was demon possessed. And Paul and them, Paul stopped and, and he, he, you know, he cast that thing. And this she did not, did for me. Okay, go, go to my next one there. Did I give you two? But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace uh, to the authorities. So, so here Paul and Silas are going around teaching and, and this little girl, she's got a, she got another motive. She, she, you can be a believer of Jesus Christ, but your motive is wrong. Your, your, what, what, your, what you're doing is wrong. She's saying the right thing, but there ain't nothing in her. She, she, she's saying the right stuff, but, but she ain't lining up with the word of God. Don't be saying the right, don't think everything good because you're saying the right stuff, but you're not lining up with the word of God. Amen. And the, and, the, and the problem with that is there is a spirit on the inside of you. Not the Holy Spirit. There's a spirit on the inside of you that is, that's using you. Amen. You can't go to every church. Every, every, you gotta, that's why the Bible says, the Lord said, I'll give you pastors after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding because we are responsible for a lot of people falling. Amen. The church, the, the pastors are, we are, because people have heard us preach the word of God and then watched us have babies on the side, have girlfriends on the side. Amen. Live unholy on the side. And then people say, you know what? Ain't no use of going. I ain't going. I'm, I'm church hurt. I don't want to go to another church. Them folk ain't about nothing. Amen. And in most cases, they telling the truth. We ain't about nothing. Amen. And, and but that, that dude, he preaching the word of God. Oh, my God. He preaching, he preaching heaven down. She preaching heaven down, but not living right. Not aligning with the word of God. Amen. And when we don't, there's an unclean spirit that's on the inside of us. You, you, you got to be careful that you're not falling because of what you're seeing. Because you are lying to, in the wrong place. I hate to talk to people and say, where you worship at? Oh, I just kind of go a little bit here. I go over here and I go over here and I go over there and over here. You know, I don't really have, I just kind of visit. I kind of, you know, hop. From here today, I know it's not right. I said, it's, not only is it not right, it's dangerous. Amen. It's not only is it not right, it's dangerous. Amen. There's no, none of us will take, and, and you got to be a newborn baby to do that. Because mature people don't do that. Amen. So if you're doing that, it ain't because you mature. It's because your spirit is an infant. Amen. And none of us would take a new infant and, and say, well, I'm going to let my infant go to this house today. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let this person watch him today. Henretta's going to watch him on, on Sunday, and Adrian's going to watch him on, on, on Monday, and Pastor Love's going to watch him on Tuesday, and Sister Deborah's going to watch him on Wednesday, and, and, and Minister Kathy's going to watch him on Thursday, and, and Minister Henry's going to watch him the next day. And then I get the baby back, and the baby's sick. Got, I mean, sick, got diarrhea and everything. I don't know what house the baby ate from and got sick. Did, 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 was it was it um, uh, brother Henry? Was it was it brother Adrian? Was it wh wh where did the baby get sick at? I don't know because they've been eating at so many different houses. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so when people get spiritually sick, you don't know where they got sick from, but they got sick because they've been eating at too many places. Amen. 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 And so you ain't supposed to be going multiple places. God is not a God of confusion. Amen. God knows where you need to go. He knows where you, who you need to be listening to. He's given you pastor after his own heart. Amen. That will feed you. Feed you with knowledge and understanding. Amen. So you don't have to ever question it. It is not up to you to choose where you worship. You, you have to have a relationship with God and God will direct you where to go. Amen. And then God will also tell you when it's time to leave there. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. What he didn't say is, when I ain't following Christ, don't follow me. 
I added that part on. You ought to be following, as long as Brian is following Christ and this is where God sent you, you ought to be following me. But as soon as I start talking nonsense, you ought to get your purse and your keys and grab your kids and somebody else's kids and he needs to get to your car and go somewhere else. Because you say, hold on, he ain't, he ain't doing, he don't, he don't fail. He's fallen. Amen. You know that because you've been spending time with God's word. Amen. You know it because you've been spending time with God's Word. And it's because you've been spending time with God's Word that you're going to know it. I'm I'm going to jump right over to to Timothy. There you go. It says, but you must continue in the things which you have learned. Because you are believers of Jesus Christ, because you have heard the Word of God, because you have received the Word of God. I know if you've been here, you've heard the Word of God and you've received the Word of God. Even growing up as a child, In your church, you might say it wasn't a good church, but you got the Word of God. You had a Bible, amen. It got you started. Praise God for that. And praise God for them people that helped you along the way. Maybe they didn't have all the knowledge they needed, amen. But they got you started. They at least told you that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, is the Son of God. Amen. They at least told you that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Amen. Don't, don't, don't talk about them folk. Praise God for them. They did the best they can, could. Amen. And it says, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of. Knowing. Say knowing. The people of God are destroyed for a lack of knowing, a lack of knowledge. Amen. And so, but, but, but here it says, knowing from whom you have learned them. You already know the word that you have learned, amen, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture, say all scripture. Don't let anybody tell you that this this book was, was, was written by the white man. It's, it's some folk out there. Te- it's some folk out there saying that, like the white man got power over God. Well, I tell you, I ain't never heard nothing so crazy. If the white man got power over God, then the white man is God. Amen. But that, that, but that's just that's just how the adversary tries to confuse the mind of people. Amen. You you don't realize you're a racist, but you're really a racist saying that. Amen. And you're ignorant. Amen. You don't know, and you're being destroyed for a lack of not knowing. Amen. My grandson, years ago, I can't remember which one it was, say, Pop, who, did, did, did God have parents? Did God, who, who, did God have parents? That's a good question, you know, for, for, for a child it is. And I said, no, if God had parents, then his parents would be God. You follow me? If God had parents, then his parents would be God. He wouldn't be God. His parents, if he had if he had parents, his parents would be God. See, God, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. There ain't no parents. God said, I was here, I always been here. I, I was here, and I was here at the beginning, and, and I'm gonna be at the end, and always is, always was, always will be God. And so if anybody has power over God, they God. If anybody got authority to do something, it's God. This book got everything in it it's supposed to have. Amen. Amen. Now, 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 now Donald Trump and 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 and, and, um um the guy that wrote um Glad to be an American, you know, they put the Constitution in the Bible. They got a Bible out there with the Constitution in it. And and oh my God. Don't you don't I know none of y'all have that Bible. Amen. Because you, you don't put the world with the word of God. It, it don't belong. The world has its own system. And God's word has its own system. And the two of them don't agree. Amen. It's just like standing up a, a, a God next to our God. That God going to fall over every time. The, 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 the Constitution cannot align itself with God's word. It doesn't align itself. God did not, America is not God. Amen. On our money it says in God we trust 
but that's just what they put on there. Amen. The country supposedly found it on the, on, the, on, the, on the word of God. Amen. Praise God for that. But God's word stands alone. It stands, nothing stands by it. Nothing stands next to it. Hallelujah. We only worship God. We only serve God. Amen. We only reference his word. Praise God. Years ago in 1800, the Catholics even had a Bible. And I've seen it. In, in, in 1800s, they had a Bible that they had put a lot of the, what they call the forgotten books or the lost books in it. Man, that thing was that thick. Amen. That Bible, did that thing did not last long because there are no lost books. Every book that God wanted in here is in here. Every, God, every book that God inspired is in here. There are some writings that were not inspired by God. Mary Magdalene, she's got, a, she's got a writing. I've read it, but God didn't inspire it. It is her own writing. It's her own, it's her own uh, handwriting, but God did not ins- inspire it. Everything that God inspired is in this book. And, and nothing has been left out. And God hadn't left anything out. It's not like you got to go read something else to find out what God said. No, it's all here. Amen. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. It's all here. And it says all scriptures is given by inspiration of God. Every, everything in this Bible was given by inspiration by God. Amen. And, and for what? And, it, and it's for profit, for profitable, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Everything God gave us, he gave us this for a purpose that it would, it would bring us to a closer revelation and knowledge of him. And so Paul, so Paul is telling Timothy, hold on to that. Hold on to what you've been taught. Hold on. Don't let it go. A part of the fall is, is forgetting the word of God and, and forgetting what you've been taught. Amen. Don't forget to pray every day. Don't, don't forget to call on the name of the Lord every day. Don't, 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 don't forget to read the word of God every day. That's what you've been taught. So, so he's telling Timothy to stay connected to what you've already learned. And that's what he's also saying to us, that the man of God may be what? Complete. The word of God complete us, thoroughly equips for every good work. We are equipped for everything that God wants us to do. You cannot get equipped without knowing the word of God. I don't care how, how, much, you, how much you pray or how much... You sing a gospel music or listen to gospel music. If you don't know this word, you know nothing. Amen. You know, if you don't have knowledge of what God has spoken from his word, amen, then you, you can sing uh, um, uh, 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 Jesus keep me near the cross, but that ain't going to help you when you get in trouble. Amen. You got to know this word. And this word has got to be in your heart and in your mouth. You got to meditate on it day and night. Hallelujah. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. In our next passage, amen, um, in, in, in 1 Timothy 4 and 1. This is, this is why people are falling away. This is, this is proof of it here. It says, now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, we're in the latter times right now, some will depart from the faith. The Bible tells us that we are in a time, listen to me, saints, that people will depart from the faith. This is key. They're falling away. It it, it says, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrine. You think, you think your lack of interest in God and in obedience to God is because of you. It's not. There are there are deceiving spirits that's helping you fall. They're deceiving spirits that's helping you stay away from God. 
deceiving spirit. Look what it says. It says, it says, it says, now the spirit express the spirit being uppercase, the Holy Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, the Holy Spirit tells us in the latter times, some will depart from faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Doctrine of demons. Boy, you, people believe in everything except the word of God today. People following everything but the word of God today. Trust in everything but God's word. Why? Because of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. That's why there's a falling away. Amen. Because of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And, it, and the Bible and the Lord forecasted, he revealed to us there is going to be a falling away in the latter times. People are going to depart from faith. They're going to depart from faith. Giving heed to deceiving spirits. You, you, you say, well, I want to do, I, I don't have to do this. I don't, that's a deceiving spirit. Amen. I know that most of us think we're so smart and that we're making our own mind up. You, you, you're not that smart. We're not that smart. I know you got degrees and people don't all, I mean, you, you're on the top of people's lists. But, but there are deceiving spirits and doctrine of demons that you read, that you hear, and, and, and a little bit of that deceiving spirit make you believe that I really want to live this way or live that way. I want to do both. You're falling. You, you're in the fall. Tyler, put, my, uh, put my, my topics up there again, those those, those many topics, if you can go back there. This is what you got to determine. Are you falling? Where are you? Do you even know? How bad off are you really? Amen. You, you, gotta, you, you know you're falling because you're not spending time with God. You, you know you're falling because you've been deceived by some things. You're spending more time with this than you are with God. And you think it's okay. That's the deceiving part of it. You think it's okay. You think you're good. You're not good. You're, you're falling. These are the latter times. You're falling. Listen, you don't want to be a separ separated from God. You, you don't, you, you don't, you don't want to experience that. You, 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 you don't want life, you, you don't want the things of life to be uh, more valuable than what your, your relationship with God. Amen. Everything that you're doing is temporary. Everything that you, you're involved with, with the exception of God, is temporary. Only what you do for Christ is going to last. Everything else is going to fade away. It's a vapor. It's a moment. It's a time. It's a, it's, it's a trend. It's, it's, it's just happening right now. That thing ain't going to last. The way you feel about it, it's not going to last. You're going to be, it, because it's all smoke and mirrors. It's deceiving spirits. Deceiving spirits. Like the little girl who's going around saying, these men are the most high servants. Of, these men are servants of the most high, and they've come for salvation. She's a deceiving spirit because she had another motive in place. And so even though you are speaking word and telling people, let me pray for you, or, 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 or God got this thing, you're a deceiving spirit. You're being deceived. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. You ought to come to church and get hurt. Amen? Amen. Amen. This ain't church hurt. This is kind of the, this is c conviction hurt. Amen? Amen. Who want to go to a church where they're not convicted? Uh -huh. now, I don't want to go to no church where I don't walk out feeling convicted. Uh -huh. Not condemned, not beat up, but you ought to feel convicted. Conviction brings you to repent. Conviction brings you to change your mind. I don't want to go to a church they're just telling me everything going to be all right. It ain't going to be all right. I want to go to a church where I'm convicted, and that conviction brings about a change in my life. Amen. My next passage, 2 second, second Thessalonians 2, 1 through 3, it says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you 
not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or letter, lowercase spirit. They're talking about don't, don't, don't be moved by unclean spirits or by words or by letter as it's from us, as, 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 it, as if it is from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Don't, be, don't, don't let nobody deceive you in, 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 in making you believe that they can tell you that Christ has come or this is when Christ's coming. We've had that. I mean, let, there, one guy said in 1999 that get your, you, know, you can sell everything because Jesus Christ is coming back. Y'all remember that? Amen. And some people did. They got rid of everything. They was there waiting on, waiting on Jesus. Got rid of all their clothes, got, gave their money away and all that. I wish I would have been close to them people, man. They gave their stuff away and, and, and they was waiting on Jesus to come in 1999. Guess what? He ain't come because they, were, they, they fell, they fell uh, victims of, 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 of deceiving spirits. It says, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirits or by words or by letter as it is from us as though the day of Christ had come. It says, let no one, say no one, no. let no one deceive you by any means for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first. The, the Bible tells us what we're experiencing now the 40 million people that have fallen away, that are falling away, that this is biblical. Amen. Y'all follow me? This is, this is, this, this is happening. It, there is a falling away. Don't be connected to the falling away. It says, it says, don't even think that Christ is coming. Don't even let anybody deceive you that he's coming because there are some things that's got to happen first. And one thing that's going to happen first is 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 uh, is is uh, the falling away comes first. People falling away from from faith, and the man of sin is revealed. It's also going to reveal the antichrist. Amen. So there there's some things, but look what happens first: a falling away. So when you think you just you just doing you, when you think you know I'm, I'm still I, I still I still believe Jesus, I still believe Jesus is the Son of God, but you know I'm just not going to church, I'm, I'm not going to the assembly. The Bible says, "Don't forsake to assemble yourself together." Amen. And then the Bible also says to us, "How can they hear?" Oh, hold on. You mean I got to hear a preacher? And I got to assemble myself in front of the TV? No. I got to assemble myself with other believers. Oh, but pastor, I do that on my job. Listen, you better stop being deceived by that, that unclean spirit. Because that little girl telling you you can do it at your job. That little girl telling you you don't have to get with, you don't have to go to no assembly. The Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? God said, I'll give you pastors after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yeah. Sound to me like he wants you to be right where you at today. Amen. Yeah. He wants you to, he wants you on purpose to get up, to go somewhere where you can hear, the, where you can be with other believers, where you can be, where you can receive from them and they can receive from you. Like earlier, you went and hugged somebody. You went and shook somebody's hand in, in 2000. 2006, 2003, between 2003, 2006, I had people to hug each other. This lady came to me after church. She told me this was the first time that year somebody had hugged her. She, had, she hadn't been to church before. First time that year that anybody had hugged her. So you don't know. The pe somebody you hugged today, they might have needed it. They, that, that touch, that, that just, that warmth. And that's what you ought to be able to get when you come to the body of Christ. You ought to be able to, to get every need met, everything fulfilled. You ought to leave here feeling joyful. You ought to leave here feeling full of the Spirit of God. You ought to leave here feeling like, man, I can, I can go a little further today. I can, I can do a little more today. Amen. Praise God. It says, let no one deceive you by, did, did I read that? I already read that. That's the third. Okay. So listen, so, so, so there's a falling away. 
You, you don't want to be, you don't want to take the falling away for granted. Amen. You don't want to, you don't want to not spend time in the word of God, in the word of God, doing those things that we should do as believers, reverencing God, reverencing God, whether you're here or you're somewhere else, do not go to a place of worship, even at your house. When you wake up in the morning, don't you flip that TV on. Don't you look at that cell phone. Before you do anything, if you do nothing, just say, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. If you don't do nothing, if you ain't, I ain't got time to pray, just at least say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Before anything, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him first. Amen. When, you, when somebody blesses you, that check hits the bank, amen, say thank you, Lord. Praise God. Say thank you. Amen. Thank, not reverence him. Respect him. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust the Lord with all your heart. Huh? Come on. It says what? Lean not to your own understanding. But in every way, do what? In all things to do what? Acknowledge him. Everything. And God will do what? Direct. That means everything. In everything, acknowledge him. Amen. Everything. You do something good, thank God. Thank you. You, you made it from here home. Thank you, Lord. Your children made it home from school. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Your children going to school, God cover them in the name of Jesus. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come to them. In every way, acknowledge. Well, I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to get me a gun in case somebody break in the house. They can still break in. Amen. And you mess around and shoot the wrong person. Could be your kid coming in the door. Amen. No, you ask God, God, what? All of my confidence and trust is in you. Ain't in this gun. I can't protect my house. The Bible says my God never sleep or slumber. I don't know. I was, I, 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 I didn't hear nothing last night when I slept. But I didn't have to worry about it. God heard everything. And I know if God didn't hear it, Henrella's going to hear it because she always waking me up saying, did you hear that? <laughs> Baby, I ain't heard nothing. <laughs> I, I, heard, I ain't heard nothing since I told you good night. Because <laughs> I don't hear nothing at night. Praise God. But, but, but I'm, I'm not worried about it. Amen. God builds a, builds a hedge around uh, those who call on his name. Amen. He builds a hedge of protection around us, amen. He watches over us and protects us, amen. The devil may attack somebody else, but he ain't going to attack you. He ain't going to attack me because, we, because what we do, we call on his name. In all our ways, we acknowledge him, amen. And he directs us, amen. And he shows us what to do, amen. Praise God. This is how people who are not fallen live every day, amen. We live by faith. And our faith increases every day. Praise God. And we are mindful. We are mindful that th there's a falling away. Our friends are falling away. Our family's falling away. And we, we, we love them, but we ain't getting with them. I ain't getting with people falling away. I mean, I ain't got nothing in common with you. I'm a witness to you to try to reel you back in. But I'm not hanging with you. No, 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 no. I'm hanging with the believers. I say I'm hanging with people that believe in God. Amen. I'm hanging with people that can, that can pray with me and that can that, that, that have a relationship with God like I have a relationship with God. Amen. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. I'm praying for that couple from Sunday. I'm praying for them. Been praying for them every day. I'm praying for them because I want them to come back to God. That's what I'm happy about. Even people that are fallen can come back. Hallelujah. Even people who are fallen can come back. Where are you? Where are you at? Are you falling? 
Are you, are you following? Are you following away? You, you have to, uh, you, you have to um, obey God. And, and sometimes your, 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 your flesh, your, not sometimes, your flesh does not want to obey God. Your flesh is against God in every way. Amen. Your mind is against God in every way. Your heart, who can trust it? It's against God. So we have to stand on the word of God. We have to reverence the word of God. We have to fear God. The Bible says that, 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 that the beginning of, that, that knowledge is the beginning of wisdom. Knowledge of the word of God is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. So if I have knowledge, I'm going to probably do the right thing, walk the right way, act the right way. Amen. Where are you? Uh, 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 Tyler, go back to that one time. Come on, stand up with me. Come on, stand with me. Are you falling? Are you falling? Are you falling? Are you, are you in the fall? You didn't know it. You didn't know you were. You didn't even know that there was a, 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 a verse that referenced that this is going to happen first. You probably just thought, man, I'm just taking a break from God. Huh? You don't need that break. You don't need that recess right there. That recess right there, you don't need it. Are you, where are you? Where are you? Have the deceiving spirits said to you, you okay? You okay? Because you at least... Uh, got the spirit of God on the inside of you, like the little girl. You just like the little girl. She knew you knew what you you knew. Those were spiritual men. You know spiritual things when you see them. Just like the little girl, but she was she. Her motive was different. Her motives were off. Where are you? Where are you in your walk with God? Is it relevant to you? Where are you? Are you falling away? Are you coming to church yet you're still falling away? Is this the only time that you spend time with God? Is it when you come here, is it the only time that you spend time with God? Uh, uh, Tyler, can you go real quick for me? Uh, Philippians uh, uh, 2, 12, and 13. Is this the only time that you spend in time with him? The rest of the time you're not spending any time? That's, that happens sometimes. This is the only time you know where your Bible is is when you come to church. It's easy now because most of us just have it on our phone. But the only time you go to it is when you're here. Paul said this, he says, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. Paul said, when you hear at church, it's easy to, to obey. It's easy to look the part. It's easy to look like everything's good. But he says, but much more in my absence, work out your salvation. He says, when you're not around other believers work out work it out work out the salvation that Jesus has given you and work it out with, with, with fear and trembling you got to work it out you got to work it out you can't when you leave here you got to work it out you got to say okay I heard what Brian said Okay, I'm, I'm going to read these scriptures over again, and I am going to separate from everything in my life that God don't want in my life. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pray and say, Lord, reveal to me, or Lord, help me remove these things in my life that you haven't placed here in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. You're working it out. You're working it out. Work it, Paul says to work it out. If you belong to Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of you. If you have Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of you. Amen. But the Spirit of God does not just want to be on the inside of you. The Spirit of God wants to be on the outside of you. Amen. Amen. Come here, come here, come here, come here just a second, brother. Brother, three brothers, real quick, real quick, real quick. Amen. I said this, I said this to you. I said this to you. Um, you got your body. I mean, you got you, you, you've got your um your spirit. You got your soul. And you got your body. The spirit, soul, and body. That's who we are. That's how God made us. Spirit, soul, and body. But you when you're born, you're born without a spirit because Adam messed it up for us. Adam lost the spirit of God. So we were born spiritually dead. Dead. But when you receive Jesus Christ, your spirit became alive. But it's the innermost part of you. But God wants your spirit to be in the front of you. So that your, 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 your soul, which represents your mind, your will, and your emotions, you're not using that to make decisions. Amen. That everything that happens in your life filters through your spirit. Amen. Should I cuss you out? Spirit say, no, don't cuss them out. That's not what we do. No, no, no. That, that, that's what you did when you was operating off of your own mind. But we don't do that. So now you're filtering that through. And, and so now your body don't respond the way you, you, you used to respond. But you respond according to your spirit. Amen. Should I lie about it? No, we don't, we don't lie no more. See, it's everything being filtered through the spirit of God. You follow me? And that's how you are working it. You've, because, because you're following God, before, because you're following God, you're working that spirit out. Working it out. You're working that spirit out front. Amen. So, you, you, so the way you treat me, I'm not going to treat you. Because everything I do, I filter through my spirit. Uh-uh, no, no, I don't do that. No, I don't hang out. No, I don't fool around. No, I don't, I don't this and I don't that. Amen. Praise God. And so by the time it gets to your body, your body following what your spirit. Amen. Thank you, brothers. So, 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 so that's what Paul is saying. Work out. Work out. And when you work it out, guess what? Your spirit, your spirit is going to also lead you in praying, lead you in fasting, lead you in, in knowing which direction to go, what, what, to, what, what to think. Amen. Your spirit is going to give you discernment. You're going to be like, I, I just don't feel right about this. I, I don't feel right about putting my signature here. I, I don't feel right about this decision. Why? Because your spirit is working it out. Amen. Where are you in the fall? Where are you? Where are you? Are you falling? Well, you can stop falling today. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Reach out and touch somebody next to you. We're going to pray as a chain this morning. Hallelujah. You may be holding the hand of somebody that's fallen. You may be dealing with, you may be holding the hand of someone that have uh, found themselves too busy to pray or too busy to spend time with God, too busy to open up a devotional, too busy to, to, to cry out to God, someone that's been just, just living. But today they say, you know what? I was falling, but I don't want to fall any longer. I didn't realize I was falling, but now I realize I was falling. So today the fall stops. Today I'm going to break my fall. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, dear God, that the latter times are now because we know and we see the falling away, dear God. And your word decrees that the falling away will happen first before the coming of Jesus Christ. And Father, there are believers who are assembled here today, God, that have not been, been, been giving you or spending time with you or not been, been recognizing or acknowledging you or reverencing you 
their God, but they've been, they've been just, just idle, dear God, and living a, a life, dear God, that's pleasing more to them than pleasing to you. They've lived to please themselves. They, they've lived to, to have the joy of this life, dear God. When we are foreigners of this country, God, when we're not even from here, when we come to know you, that we are just passing through. And they forgot that they were just passing through, Lord. And they've got a, a, a connected and attached to the things of this world. And Father, today we pray to break every covenant agreement that we've made with the things of this world. Everything that we have decided to do, every way that we've decided to live, everything that we're in agreement with that is that you're not in agreement with, Father, we pray that you would break that covenant agreement today in the name of Jesus. Destroy, destroy that stronghold, destroy that tie, destroy that relationship, God. God, some things that we've gotten ourselves involved in, dear God, we, we need you to get us out of. We got in, but we don't know how to get out. But God, we need you to be like Paul, who turned around and said, come out in the name of Jesus. And, and that, that, that unclean spirit, that deceiving spirit, that, that, that spirit that's in us, God, that, that has our motives off and our minds going in the wrong direction and have us thinking that everything's okay. You hate it, but we okay with it. God, we want to hate what you hate. We want to not, God, if you don't like it, we don't want to like it. If you don't like it, we don't want to be okay with it, God. If you don't like it, we want to move away from it in the name of Jesus. God, break our fall today in the name of Jesus, dear God. God, turn everything around in our life, dear God. We've heard your word. We've received your word. We've received the warning that we've heard this morning, and we're heeding to it in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you that we came today to hear this warning, and we thank you, God, that it was given to us. And today, dear God, we'll walk in a new way. We'll live in a new way, and it's because of you. And in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you. And we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you.